Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's Tuesday and it's Tuesday and it's the last Tuesday of the year. And here we are once again for another session of Set Apart. For those of you who may be tuning in for the first time, I am Elder Valeria Coley. And this is Set Apart. <laughs> um, Set Apart is something that was derived from the scripture of Romans 1 and 1, where Paul the Apostle said that he had been set apart for the mm -hmm. gospel of God. And here we are tonight doing what he has bid us to do, Lord God, and that is to spread his gospel and to give him glory and to give him praise and to help oh, our brother and our sister to draw closer to him mm -hmm. because of who he is and what he is doing tonight. I am, uh, uh, for those of you, again, who might, might be tuning in for the first time, I have been on sabbatical for a while and the Lord has, you know, given me the to go ahead to come out tonight and 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 do this last Tuesday of the year. And um, as you can see, I do have a guest, Amen. And we are going to do what the Lord has has called and purposed us to do. I am going to like give you a heads up of who this young lady is on the other side of me, but I'm gonna let her tell you who she is. Um, this 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 is a this is a time we have been in a pandemic for almost two years now, mm -hmm. and and for for those of you, um, I have never I never knew what a pandemic was until this happened, and I've heard some of the seasoned saints talking about they remember the last pandemic that hit mm -hmm. America. Mm -hmm. And I just found that amazing in itself. And if you are not, if you are not sure of what the Lord is doing, I urge you to you need to be paying attention because it's bigger than this COVID. Mm -hmm. God is God is doing what He's doing because He's trying to get the attention of His people. And unfortunately. And I say this, unfortunately, there are still a lot of people who are not paying attention. But because they are not paying attention, does that mean that he does, does not want us to stop saying what he wants said? And that's why we're here tonight. That's why we're here tonight. So I, um, my sister here, my sister Renee Woodfin, I have been knowing Renee 20 plus years. I know, if not a little bit longer, um, and and God is 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 God is doing some amazing things with this young lady, and you're gonna see in a minute. <laughs> you're gonna see. I promise you, you're gonna see in a minute. But I want I want her to introduce herself to you, and then um, we are gonna go right into because we don't want to hold you long, but we want to go right into what the Lord will have us to do tonight. And we need you all to, to pray with us and hear what the Lord is saying, what the Lord is saying. And, and don't be surprised if, at what we're saying to you. You've heard it before, but there's a reason why it's being repeated. So don't, don't throw it out the window because it's like, okay, I haven't heard that before. Okay, you heard it before because he wants you to hear it again. So, Renee. Tell the hey. people who you are. Hey, I'm just Renee. Renee Woodfin, um, yeah. friend of Valeria. Um, we, uh, yes, as she said, we've been friends for many years. Um, mm -hmm. What she did not tell you is, is that we're also prayer partners. Um, I wish you would tell a story about uh, this, this, that situation because her story is way funnier than mine. Um, it is. You need to tell it, and then we'll and we can get going because I think it's relevant to what we're trying to get to. Um, Are you talking about how we became prayer partners? How we became prayer partners and, and our issues with becoming prayer partners. And so, and, so since you want to put that out there, it, just, it must be it must gonna be a blessing to somebody. So, again, me and Renee, we have been we have been friends for years, and we were part of the same church. 
but myself and Renee are kind of like similar creatures. Um, and because of, we're part of a women's group called Deborah's Remnant. And the person who, <laughs> who is, happens to be our pastor right. had, had been given instruction to the women of Deborah's Remnant to, to, to couple us up <laughs> as prayer partners. So when, when Pastor Akisha said that I was me and Renee was going to be prayer partners, I was like, no, I don't think that's going to work out too good. Because we too much alike, and right. she'll be on said something I don't like, and I might be on said something she don't like, and instead of us praying, we'll be, you know, saying, cussing each other out pretty much. I mean, that's just the bottom line of it. And we never knew after all this time because – after a period of time, Renee had left the ministry that we were part of for uh, a long time. She had left the ministry and I had not seen her in a very long time. Mm -hmm. And here God had brought us right back together. And I don't, I, she, you know, she, she always wanted to put me on the spot, but <sighs> how this came where Keisha said, okay, the Lord said you and Renee. I'm like, oh, are you sure? We both said no. We both said no. We both said, we really it. did. We both said no. Like I'm like, uh, I'm not praying with Renee. You okay? okay you you need to pick somebody else because I already know that might not that I don't know if Jesus is gonna show up in any of them prayers whatsoever because we gotta get beyond us before we start praying about stuff that he wants us to pray about. But so be it here it is. Well, it's been almost a year now. Um, eight was, months. Was, oh, it's, no, oh, How long? Well, it's, 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 it's six, six months. About June, about, at least six months. Okay, or so. six months. We've yeah. been praying together. When I say every, well, let me say almost every day, because sometimes we miss maybe one day or two days, but <clears throat> ninety-eight percent of the time we've been praying together every morning at five a.m. Yep. And here we are. Here we are. So don't don't ever don't ever think um God is is he made a mistake. Because I promise you, me and her both was like, yeah. we not I'm not praying with her. Right. We say yeah. that about each other. Because we're sim we are similar creatures, I promise you. Yes. You talking about straight no chaser? Okay, yes. you looking at straight no chaser on both yes. sides. Yes. So when you when and this one don't like to back down. She liked a good fight. No. And okay, you how many times like, okay, you need to leave me alone. And then she'll keep pushing, pushing, pushing. And then it's like when when God steps in and does what he does, this is the resort, the resort, the result of what God will do. Be you don't know what God will do and what he will and who he will use. Absolutely. I yeah, promise I you, my comp what I'm saying out of my mouth goes both ways. She thinks the same way. It go both yes. ways. Yes. And she'd yes. be like, okay, Valeria, okay. And I don't know how many okays we get in there, mm. but we know what the okays mean. Amen. <laughs> well, it, the, it's just the beauty of the fact that if more things have been, have been, yokes have been destroyed through the prayer of us coming together mm -hmm. um, and being obedient to what our pastor get the charge that she gave us as relates to praying and being mm -hmm. steadfast in that um, we found out even though that we are confrontational and frictional but we also um, have a heart for God and want to do what his will is mm -hmm. and in that um, even though we uh, are straight no chase of uh, the truth is, is that we do soothe one another. Mm -hmm. yep. um, when yep. one is down, the other one, I don't know where it comes from, because I mm -hmm. promise you it's not scripted. It's not, um, it is not rehearsed. It is just whatever God says, just say it. And it, whatever falls, whatever shakes out, we're just dealing with it. And, mm -hmm. you know, I guess this is a shameless plug for our pastor, uh, Prophet Zakisha. You know, you know, we, you know, we, we might, you know, one, thank you for having the, uh, 
the guests to basically tell us that we were going to be prayer partners because, you know, I'm pretty sure that, you know, that took some courage within itself because we're not necessarily the easiest people to tell stuff to all the time and sticking with it and not backing down when we were like, we're not going to yeah. do it. We don't care what you say type of situation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because she saw something that we both needed broken within each other that only we could probably do. You know, because mm -hmm. if we probably was partnered with somebody else, they would not challenge us the way we challenge us. And mm -hmm. this is not from a, a performer's perspective. This is in the spirit, slugging it out, asking for the yokes to be broken off of our lives. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we, have seen, we have seen more things broken off our lives in the last six months than we have in the last 20 years. Absolutely. And that's the truth. So if yeah. you ain't got no prayer partner, you need to get your prayer partner who's going to mm -hmm. pray for you in this. That will confront you with your issues and challenge you. And I promise you, this 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 chick right here, <laughs> all the above, will confront you and challenge you and have a straight face and care nothing about your feelings. No, I do not. I promise you. And and I guess this is a precursor of what's get ready, what we get ready to talk about because. It's, 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 it's how God set all of this up. It's, it's, it's amazing how even just me looking at the scripture and just us just talking about right. what God has done with us in the last six months is a precursor. It's just amazing how God, because Renee was part of the media ministry at the church that we came from. And right. I would see Renee and passing it. I mean, we were always cordial. Right. We were always cordial. We were friends. We were cordial. You understand what I'm saying? But it wasn't until she she came back into my life through ministry right. and being part of the same ministry that we're part of now and God doing what he did with our pastor, our our apostle, that we coming together here and God's just doing what he's doing. So don't don't throw stuff out the window because you won't agree with it. Because you don't know what God got in mind. That's that's what I'm saying. You don't know what he got in mind. Because neither one of us saw this coming. No. I promise you. <laughs> no. Neither one of us saw this coming. No. If you would have asked us, we would have told you. Absolutely no. not. And and wait a minute. That's a we saying it nicely. We wouldn't have said it like this. <laughs> right. I promise. It is right. and, and it's not that Absolutely we don't love God or any not. else thing like that. I'm just telling you, yep. you know, our personalities and different things like that. And um mm -hmm. You know, God has been a blessing. Um, Valeria's been a blessing. Valeria has a keen eye for the word of God. She pays attention to the word. She is an awesome steward of the word. So that also challenges me to make sure I am uh, basically saying what is correct because she is going to hold me accountable if I ain't, you know, or, you know, put it in, you know, put it in the right perspective if I'm off. And that's, that's just awesome. You know, that's just it, awesome. and it go both ways because even though she didn't give you part of her resume, Renee, I was not gonna do that. She, I know, but she 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 teaches on a professional level. She teach <clears throat> on college level, so she's a professor. So she's very astute. <laughs> she 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 knows because <laughs> I promise you, y'all don't even understand. Renee be praying sometimes, and she be using words, and I'll be like, Jesus, what does that mean? I prompt oh, y'all don't understand yeah. what oh, this what it is. She be praying and she be using words. And I promise you, I grab my phone and I be typing in the word what I think it might sound like. And I read the meaning. I'm like, oh, that's what that means. And I understand. And it's it, and it's a benefit to me because it helps me study even more on another level because she's using words that I ain't never heard before but it makes all the sense in the world world because especially in the way the context and how she's praying it, it's like oh so that's how she put that in with that right there because if any of you have looked at this this live before I've said it more than one time my my favorite word when I found out when I heard the word my favorite word is plethora. Plethora, yes. Plethora. Oh, that is my favorite word in the dictionary. Yeah. Plethora. And oh, when yeah. I found out what it meant, I was like, I did some amazing. Like I found, I figured some out. And when I'm praying with with my sister 
and she prays, I learn in prayer. I do. I listen. I listen to hear. I listen to learn. And I listen to hear what God is going to say behind because we have had prayer sessions where the Lord just came in and he, we just let him do what he do. And our prayers are not about us all the time. No. We throw our stuff in there too. Absolutely. But it's not about us all the time. Do you know how many? And, and I'm not saying this for the pat on the back and I'm not saying this for accolades. What I'm saying is this is what God will have us to do. He has us interceding on behalf of other people in other situations. Mm -hmm. And we're going through hell on our side. Mm -hmm. I promise you, mm -hmm. we're struggling with some stuff on our side. But it's not that much of a struggle where we can't hear what God is saying to us to intercede on somebody else's behalf. No. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. No. Yes, we may got our issues and I got mine. And, and But it's not to the point where we can't pray the way God wants us to pray. So, it's so sad. Yeah, it's so sad because you we, know we, it's like she can ask a question and God will give an answer, give me the answer, or vice versa. And it is just like mind blowing uh, sometimes in prayer, um, in tandem. Um, how He does that is it's. it's all I can say is it's amazing. I've never experienced, I have never, I've had prayer partners in the past, but I've never experienced anything like this on this level. Um, Valeria's poor mouth and, and talking about, you know, I'm learning just as much as uh, she is <coughs> in this deal. Um, again, she is a student of the word. She loves the word of God. She is a student of it. Um, and, you know, I just adore that. I truly do. Um, um, so, you know, I don't know how long we're gonna be rolling together, but you know, we're gonna ride it out. Yeah, we're gonna we definitely gonna ride it out. We'll see what the <laughs> Lord does, amen. But you know, hey, it, this we just wanted to give you this is this is how this this is this is how this relationship got stronger because again, we had a rapport, but God had something else in mind, and and this amen. is this is the result. The amen. result, result, I don't know why I can't say result. Mm. I don't know why I'm getting tongue twisted, mm. but at any rate. <laughs> so <clears throat> tonight, you know, we wanted we wanted to share with you um, the the scripture will be coming out of tonight is Exodus 20 um, mm -hmm. verses one through four, right. but I actually went back to chapter 19, and chapter 19 um, of Exodus talks about um, when the Lord had brought. Um, Israel out of Egypt. Right. He had gotten them out of um, the hand of Pharaoh right. and he had led them to Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the Lord had given Moses instruction <laughs> to right. give to the people right. and, the, and, 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 and the Lord, this is, this, is, this is what's amazing. The Lord brought the people of Israel out of Egypt. Listen mm -hmm. to this. He brought the people out of Egypt to Mount Sinai, and God said, Moses, go down there and tell them this, 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 and this. Mm -hmm. And he, Moses did what he told them to do. Right. And Moses came back and told God what the people said. Right. Let this sit with you for a minute. God brought them out of Egypt, brought them to Mount Sinai, okay? gave Moses instruction. Moses went and told the people what God said. And Moses came back to God and told God what the people said. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I, I just, I just want that to sit with you for a minute because what you need to understand is that God did not have to give them an option. He gave them an option after he brought them out of bondage. He gave them a, an option. Mm -hmm. He gave them an option. That's chapter 19. So once he gave them an option and Moses told God what the people said, then Moses, then God said, this is, this is the good part. This is the good part. <laughs> then, Mo, then God said, okay, now I'm going to come down. <clears throat> uh-huh. I'm gonna come. I'm, I need you to put. I need you. 
read the read the scripture. I need you to put boundaries around Mount Sinai, right. where there's no animal or no human can come and touch the mountain. Because mm -hmm. if they touch him, they gonna they I'm gonna die. kill him. Right. They gonna die. I'm a, in other words, he gonna kill him. Mm -hmm. That's that's what he said. You right. Know? right. He told them to prepare him to prepare for his coming. So now here it is, you know, God God is doing what he's doing. And and he said, okay, so they, they heard what I said and they receptive. So I'm going to come down and I'm going to talk to you, Moses. I'm going to talk to you, but I'm going to let them hear me talk to you. So they are always trust what comes out of your mouth. Okay. That's in chapter 19. That's in chapter 19. And if you pay attention, some, you're going to get something that you need to hear. So when he came down and he he allowed <laughs> the people to hear him talk to Moses, and this is where we go go into, because again, you got to remember, they had to prepare themselves for the coming of the Lord. Let that sit with you too. <clears throat> they, had to, they had to take right. a bath. Right. They had to wash their clothes. Right. They, right. they they couldn't have married people couldn't have sexual intercourse right they right. had to be pure right before the lord showed up uh-huh the place that he brought them to they had to purify themselves before he before he he showed up and mm -hmm. they did that right and when they did that this is where we're gonna jump into chapter 20 verses one through four you want me to read it first, Renee, and then we're gonna go with it from there, or that's fine. Okay, so Exodus 20. I just gave you the I just gave you the background in chapter 19. Exodus 20, verses 1, 1 through 4. This is the New Living Translation. It says, Then God gave the people all these instructions. Mm -hmm. Verse 2 says, I am the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt the place of your slavery. Mm -hmm. mm. Verse three says, you must not have any other God but me. Right. Verse four says, you must not make <clears throat> for yourself an idol of any kind of, of an image of anything in the heavens or on the earth or in the sea. Now, if we go beyond that, then we go beyond that. But that's what we're going to jump off of. <laughs> okay. He said... He said, I am the Lord, your God, mm -hmm. that brought you out of the place of your slavery. Right. Uh-huh. That's verse two. Mm -hmm. He identified himself and told you what he did. Mm -hmm. And then once he, once he solidified that part, then he said, okay, since I did all that, you, ain't gonna, you can't have nobody else before me because I'm the right. one that did all that. Right. And then so since and so you won't get nothing going on in your brain, mm. don't don't think that you're trying to don't make nothing that might you might think look like me and call it me and worship it when you ain't never seen me. You don't oh. know what I look like. Uh -oh. yes. uh -huh. yes. So he he made sure he covered the heavens, the earth, and the sea. Mm -hmm. Because if what is it, 75% of the earth is made it's up of water? water. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can you can separate the other what um 25%, mm -hmm. you know, 12 and a half is land and 12 and a half is sky. I mean, it ain't nothing else to that. Oh wow. So mm -hmm. you know what you gonna do with that? Because you mm -hmm. know, you 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 know, <laughs> you know, people you got people out here, they creating stuff, they mm -hmm. making people, gods. Mm -hmm. They making they making birds and 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 places and all this stuff idols, right? God's people. Remember, he talking to his people. He ain't right. talking to the the Egyptians. He talking to his people, the Which Israelites. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. go mm -hmm. ahead, Renee. Go ahead. Well, no, that's no, that's good. Um, I think that in the season that that. that I think the problem that we're having is, is that when we look at the scriptures, specifically these scriptures, and it's talking about um, idols, 
uh, we're looking at somebody bowing down to some particular type of a statue and that we are really forgetting that idols can be a person. It could be, you know, it could be you idol your children. It could be um, other people who you idolize for whatever reason. Anything that you put ahead of God um, is an idol. If I'm going to go schoolhouse rock away. Go, okay, let me hear it. A person, place, or thing. They call it a noun. Okay, I'm good with that. So yeah. anything that mm -hmm. can take a place of God can come in the form of a person, place, or thing. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Nate. Absolutely, and 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 that's where I think we get in. We get into some difficulties because because we're not bowing down to our idol. Um, we we don't see our idol. We don't see our idol worship, or we don't think we're idol worshiping. We think that we got issues. We think that we have. Um, you know, some things that we need, some kinks or things that we need to work out, but we don't really see it as an idol. And and and, and in the last few months, um, God has been dealing with me about the idol worshiping and how even from the perspective of the church and the house of God, uh, we have been doing an idol thing. We've been doing idol. We make our pastors idols. Um, we set up on pedestals, um, which they should not be on. Meaning like there's there should be a reverence for them, but everybody. Um, but the problem is, is um, when we make them, when we make them our God, as opposed to going to God for the answers that we're looking to, meaning they should help us and provoke us to, to go to God to get what we need. We go to them. See, when Valeria was talking about 19, the reason why they got to that point was because really for real, the children of Israel did not want to do what was necessary to be right to go to God. Because God said he wanted to see all of them. He didn't want to just see Moses. He didn't want to just see the elders. He said all of them come up into the cloud and we're going to have some conversation. And they said, no, we don't want to do that. We scared he going to kill us. And Moses tell him, no, come on up there. He just want to make sure y'all understand y'all need to revere him and that this ain't no game when you come in to the king. No, nah, no, nah, you go and whatever, whatever he tell you, we're going to be good with it. So God did allow that. But the problem with that is, is the people then didn't never had to change. Because see, Moses was the one going through all the changes. It wasn't the people. That's why it was easy for them. Even though they said, they told that lie and said that they were going to do what he said. No, they didn't. Every time he came back down, they didn't go, for real, we got to do that? Why we got to do that? We was doing better when we was in Egypt. And that was a lie. But that's because they didn't want to conform. They didn't want to make the changes so that they can experience all the, the fullness of what God wanted them to do. Because they didn't have to have no intermediary. That could have been a wrap right there for the Israelites. But no, that's they, not, they, that's not what they want to do. Me, they right. didn't have to have what kind of mediary? What you say? Intermediary. Intermediary. They ain't intermediary. using the word. I ain't never heard no. I ain't never heard that. What's the they intermediary? Didn't have to, they ain't have to have no go-between. They was oh. going straight to the faucet. They was going straight to the tap to hear it from the mouth of God. And they didn't want to do that. So see, because they didn't want to do that, now they got wiggle room to question. Because see, they didn't hear it. Moses did. Are you sure you got it right, Moses? And the issues that we are dealing with today from an idol worship perspective is two. One had to do with from a leadership perspective and from a people perspective. And from a leadership perspective, when God has given the when God has given our men and women of God the task ahead to do, and he has ordained them to do that particular thing. They get scared and they create these schemes so that they can keep the people in place. So that they for the because of the insecurities, it's an insecurity thing. Now keep in mind, and okay, you want scripture? I got scripture for you. Go ahead, Valeria. Say what you're gonna say, and then we'll go to the scripture. I ain't gonna say nothing. <clears throat> I was just waiting for you to finish. I'm, okay. No, you can go ahead. You can. No, 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 I don't have nothing to say. That's what I'm saying. Oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. So the the, what, the example I want to give here is uh well, first let's deal with we dealing with Exodus when we deal with Exodus 21 through 4. Um 
God is saying and is out when he takes us out because we have been crying and looking and asking for relief because of the different things and structures that have been in place in the church so that the people can be free to worship. When he takes us out of that bondage, he doesn't want us to go back. He doesn't want us to recreate that bondage someplace else. And the example that he gave me for that was this. You know how I don't know about y'all, but my parents are from the South. And they came up here looking for a better way of life, right? Hard in the South so they can come up to the big city so they can get jobs and that they'll be able to move around and be able to acquire more things and do some stuff that they couldn't do at that time when they were in Virginia and North Carolina. Okay, here's the thing. If you take those ideologies, if you take those principles and those concepts that you got from the country and brought them up here, what's the difference? There is none. It's the same thing. You're doing the same thing, just in a different place. And God is saying that when he brings us out, he don't want us to recreate the same thing in a different place. He wants us to be totally free to worship him and spirit and the truth. Now, the question is, is are we aware of the fact that you've been in bad ministries and we have heard doctrine that's off? Are we willing to allow him to heal us? Or because now we have gotten this newfound freedom, we're going to take that newfound freedom and set up our altar and this new idol that's wrapped in a different package, but it's the same idol that we got from the other place and do the same things. So when we're talking about from a leadership perspective, um, idols, Jeroboam is our the example that we want to use for today. Jeroboam in 1 Kings 12, about the 26th verse, what happened was he was ordained by God. The, the prophet came and told him that he was going to be king, that he was going to rend um, the, the kingdom from David because Solomon wasn't doing the right thing. He had all these wives. He had started doing all this idol worship and God wasn't pleased. But he told Jeroboam that if he would follow him, matter of fact, let's just go to that. Let's just go over that chapter. First Kings 12, um, 12 and about 26. Go ahead, babe. First King 12, 26. Oh, no, let's go to 11 first, the promise, and then we'll go to 12. The promise okay. is um, 1 Kings eleven thirty eight. This is what God had promised Jeroboam. <laughs> so, Jeroboam uh, 11, 38, excuse me, 11, 38. Mm, I got King James, so, because, you know, I can't switch over because of a lie, but go ahead. Okay, so... I'm using New Living Translation. Go ahead. I got you. All right. So if you listen to what I tell you and follow my ways and do whatever I consider to be right, and if you obey my decrees and commands as my servant David did, then I will always be with you. I will establish and endure destiny for you as I did for David, and I will give you Israel. I will give Israel to you. And here's the reason why he said he was doing it, because Solomon's sins, I will punish the descendants of David, though not forever. So God had told Jeroboam, if he would just act right, that he, he would make his kingdom perpetual, right? But see, and OK, so he was OK with it initially. Solomon tries to kill him. So he goes off and he goes away. Solomon dies. He comes back. God does what he says, because Rehoboam, of course, was not going to act right. And it was already ordained. So we knew what's happened. So now you got Jeroboam. He got the folk up there and they are following him. He got 10 and Rehoboam got two. But then if you go to 12 uh, in the. Uh, chapter 12 and go about the 26th verse, you'll see what he did. He started not believing God and what he said. That's uh, 12, about 26. Uh -huh. And it says, uh, Jeroboam thought to himself, unless I am careful, the kingdom will return to the destiny, um, to the dynasty of David. When these people go to Jerusalem to offer sacrifices at the temple of the Lord, they will again give their allegiance to King Rehoboam of Judah. 
they will kill me and take him and make him um, their king instead. So with the advice of his counsel, the king made two golden calves and he set it up one in Sichu and the other one in Ephraim. And this is where the people of Israel now are going to go and worship as opposed to going to Jerusalem and worship as they were taught to. So some of the reason why we have strange fire and idol worship is because our leaders are, 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 are insecure with what God has told them to do. So to make themselves secure, they do these things outside of what the will of God is to keep the people close or in where they want them to be, which is, uh, you know, to make them be satisfied. And then we got the other thing where you um, the people push the leader into creating these structures so that they will be OK. I want you to go to Aaron. Go ahead. Cause Aaron, I was thinking, you already know that's where I, we going. We're going to I Aaron. want you to go to Aaron. Go ahead. We're going to we're going to Aaron. I told you we was gonna be jumping around to Exodus. If we go to Exodus, okay. uh Exodus 32. Mm -hmm. Moses ahead. up in the mountain. Moses been gone a long time. Allegedly. I don't even know what a long time is, but he's been gone a long time. He must be dead. What we gonna do, Aaron? Like we ain't got nothing to worship. Like, you know. They can't worship without without Moses being there, and 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 so he creates a system so that the people can be satisfied. Stop. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Stop. Ask your question. Ask your question. No, 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 no. So you you said what you what you, you what you just said? You said the leader created a system so the people can be satisfied. Yes. Yes, because wait a minute, because remember, they was pressing on Aaron because Moses gone. What are we going to do? Why couldn't they do what they was always doing? Why does the leader have to be there in order for you to follow the ordinance of which have already been put before you? They already know what it was. They didn't change because Moses wasn't there. So we have two issues. So so now in my head, OK, so the people really didn't believe what Moses said again, because they didn't really have to be held accountable because Moses was one telling them they just say, OK, we will obey. And as soon as he's not there, no, we not. And Aaron going to now build this calf again, a calf, an idol so that the people will be satisfied in in where they are, as opposed to growing. Because remember, God said he didn't want you to make nothing to look like something to re resemble him. And we even have an issue today, remember, because if you grow up in a black household, you got this white Jesus picture somewhere, right? Because mm -hmm. my There's grandma nothing. had one. And yeah, I was well. scared to death when I threw it in the trash because I thought <laughs> I thought I was I thought God was gonna kill me because I threw oh that picture God. in the trash. Oh my I was scared. God. It oh was the God. it was the white man that was sitting on the wall yes, and every time yes, you walked, yes. the eyes followed you. That was that yeah, that was that one. Okay. We had the oh, we had the one with the light that had the little light on it that you could plug up in the light. It was oh illuminate. yeah, it shine on the face. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. was in my grandma's house. Yeah, but so. I, but I want but I want you to go back to okay. the part about the, <laughs> the Lord have mercy about oh God. Okay, I want yeah. you. I I I need to. I need to. I need to break it. I need to break it in half. All right, do your thing. Because when you was talking about the people saying they was going to do something because mm -hmm. Moses was there, and then when Moses wasn't there, they said they weren't going to do it. So I'm, I'm, getting ready, I'm getting ready to go down the street. Do your thing. So how many, how many people be doing stuff when the pastor see them? They do everything because the pastor did. But when the pastor ain't there, they do what they want to do. They give in, they give in whoever's whoever is in oh. leadership hell. Okay. I ain't gotta so, do what you say. I ain't gotta do oh, this. The okay. pastor not here. Or better pastor, yet, my favorite, they ain't even got to come because he's not here. He don't know we're not here. He don't know. So how many times have I said? Mm -hmm. Pastor ain't here. I ain't got to do that today. I could take a break. 
Yeah. I ain't got to yeah. give my best. I might, I might come, but I ain't gonna give you my best job that I would do if you oh, see me. Oh, how many times? But okay, so, oh, okay, so the past ain't okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I'm dispelling all this stuff. So, you that that's a dead giveaway. Because what about you're, your sincerity of service to the Lord? Correct, okay. absolutely. I'm, because I'm, I'm, the, I'm the Bible you. says in Colossians three twenty three that you, you the things that we do is we do it heartily unto the Lord. Absolutely, unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. We 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 are we yes we are all, we are definitely supposed to give honor where honor is due. Absolutely. But you need to understand what honor means as well. Absolutely. Because the honor of the man should never be higher than the honor of the God. Right. Like never. God still make looking. Okay, like God took a break and he don't see that you down there slumming no. because your leader not. Oh. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, so, yeah. All that, so all that. you know, so you want to throw that thing out there about you giving honor what honors do, but do you understand what honor is? And do you have it right in your head? Do you have it right in your spirit? Absolutely. That that's that, and, and these are the questions you have to ask yourself continually sometimes in certain situations on a regular basis absolutely on a regular basis absolutely you can you can the honor can never if you are serving if you are serving a higher power right. and i you know people be they don't want to call his name but right. i'm gonna call his name for you jesus Let's, if you are serving a higher power mm. the man the woman the honor should not be, it should not. You you shouldn't no. It should never be. It in shouldn't matter situation. who it doesn't matter who is heading up the service that particular day. You give them the same fervor as you do as if it was the main senior pastor. Okay. And 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 because and, and Renee said it earlier about the insecurity piece. Because People will, will allow you to worship them because they're insecure. Right. They want the worship. The, your worshiping them gives them affirmation. Right. right. Now, understanding my affirmation don't mean nothing in, in the sight of God. It's, it's him. It's in him that we live and move and have our being. It's in him. So if, if, you, if, you, if you just not coming on and you didn't hear the, the beginning of this live, we are to be this is this is the word mm. we are to to prepare for the coming of the lord absolutely that's the word of this life mm. and and we we going into this thing the way the lord wants us to and that's fine but if you're just not coming on and you trying to figure out what we're talking about we are to prepare for the coming of the lord because he brought us out of darkness into the marvelous light. He brought us out of bondage into his holy mountain where we are to worship him. The Bible says, John 24, 4 and 24, 23 and 24, God is spirit. spirit. And those that and worship, worship him must him worship him in spirit, spirit and in truth. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank so you. so if, you, if, you, if, you, if you lost, I just gave it to you. I just found you. I just gave you a way to find your way back. I it's not hard. hard. Mm. And Jesus. it's not hard. It's, it's not hard. And it's not hard. The it's issue not becomes hard. of where you place the value. Is mm. the value on God or is the value on a man? See, here's the thing. See, the and this is the reason why leadership sometimes have issues. Because the thing that you you uh you you give accolades to, that's what people are going to be drawn to. People are not going to be drawn to like the helps ministry and stuff like that because, you know, that's that's always working. But the stuff that gets highlighted all the time or the people who get highlighted all the time, they're going to mimic that behavior. And that may Absolutely. not be the behavior that you're trying to that you want the example to be. We are a part of the body. Everybody has to be nourished. Everybody has to be considered. Or there is no way we can turn the situation around if we are only saying that the mouth is important or the eye is important. We need all of this. Uh, we need all of this for the fight. 
not for just the fight today, but the fight in the days to come. And we can't do that if everybody wants to be the favorite piece, because that's the only thing that gets um, the accolade. And the at the end of the day, piece? the favorite really? piece. The favorite That's piece. the only part that gets the accolades, the favorite piece. So in this instance, <clears throat> think about it. And okay. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong. The favorite piece in this instance is the head. Mm -hmm. Explain that to me. Explain and when I say the head, because he's... When, when you're talking about the body of Christ, mm -hmm. you're talking about it's the head that, that's able to control what, go, what, the, what the rest of the body does. Okay. All right. You, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's always, you always putting people up here in God's place. Because remember, remember the Bible says that Christ is the head of the church. Yes. So you have people who are trying to come in and get to the head. And that's where all the accolades, because you know, we, you know, we pay attention to the head. Or the head gets the gets the best of everything. Oh, okay. So you and, caught it. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. They, the they, head, get the, the they get the best of everything. Okay. So of course everybody wants to aspire to get that. Okay. Um, but the problem of it is, is from a leadership perspective, you should be giving it to the people. Then that way, if th we in the church have to get to the point that if the weakest link can't cast out demons, we got a problem. Oh, if you can't you pray down fire, oh. you want to go pray down fire? Well, we have to, because the thing of it is, is that, that we trying to create, we try to break structures and paradigms. If only and certain systems. people can pray and systems, if only certain people can pray, then that's why they keep coming back to you. And then the leaders are saying they're worn out. But if you haven't taught the people how to pray, then you got this nasty cycle. So I need you to stop right there. Okay. Now that, that is one of that is one of the reasons <clears throat> why I pay attention to 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 people. Okay. That is one of the very reasons why. And that I am so grateful that the Lord has allowed me to be exposed to people who teach people how to pray and they make them pray. They put them out there to pray. They put them out there to operate in their gift. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh -huh. Opposed to having them on the side as their trophies on the wall, they making them, they putting them to work so they know how to operate in their gift. Don't play with me because now that means that the tent of our leaders have to be, they have to be willing to expand the tent in order for the people to flow like they need to flow. If we want to have the body to operate supposed to be, our leaders have to stop beating us back under their constraining tent because they're afraid. That insecurity thing. The church can't flow if the tent is too tight and the people can't release the gifts. Because everything is in the body. At first, initially, when I when I thought about when I read the scriptures, it's talking about that everything is in the body that we need. I was like, how could it possibly be when we need we have I can see right here, right now, like in the church that I'm going to, we don't have this, 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 this. And now that I've gotten older and I've been around enough, it's not that it's not there, is the people have to be free in order to release it and be able to operate in the gift. And if the pastors aren't nourishing it, the leadership structures aren't nourishing that. If they're saying the only thing you can do is, is to sit here for five or six years until I get to see you for a long time in order to use you, what's the point in that? Where is that scripturally in the Bible? So, you know, we're famous and we, we've said it over the years. How many times we have prayed the, the prayer of j <laughs> <laughs> expand my church you can, but see you can't you ask for expansion but then when you I expand then you. you get scared and then you're gonna, you. you gonna get the fence and you're gonna tie the knot and say you can't go out the gate don't you dare go out the gate okay i'm sorry I'm not, okay go ahead do your thing okay. no go ahead i want you to go ahead because how many years have we prayed the prayer of jbad i tap out mm. i remember because that was we a hot prayer that was a that hot was a hot we done got the book. We done read the book. We done what? had classes on the study. What? 
Lord, enlarge our territory. Who is who is it? Donald Lawrence. Lord, enlarge our territory. Bruce Wilkerson, yeah, had wrote a whole book on, uh, not even a whole sentence. But here's the thing. How the same issues that the Israelites have as we do, we don't want to work for the expansion. God, see, God can do a miracle and give it to us, but if we don't even know how to maintain it, what's the point? We're just going to spoil it. We're just going to abuse it. We're just going to break it. In order for us to get these things that we're asking God for, there's some things required of us. There's some things that we have to just get out of us, reconcile our members to be able to hold the capacity of those things. We want to see lives change, but at the same time, as soon as the lifestyle changes because we pray, then we get jealous of it. They're in the body of Christ. We should be clapping. It shouldn't just be that only certain people get blessed. How can you have a church that's in a million dollar church in the hood and ain't nobody in the hood being blessed rising up out of that? And you got 10, either two and three generations of the people going through the same stuff and they gone to the same church for years. How is that blessed? How is that a benefit? How's that a benefit to the community? Even now in a pandemic, how many churches in the hood making sure that the people are prayed for and that they are casting and spelling them to still go and do what, call, what needs to be done in the season? How many churches are closed all together and don't even have a place for people to go and pray? I ain't saying have a service because maybe we, we can't do that, but can we go in there and pray? Are we that afraid of what's going on with COVID that we can't go into the church and pray because we scared? We we believe that COVID is king over the king of kings. So I got issues and I'm not saying that I'm right on everything. I'm just saying this is where I am. How where's the church in the pandemic? We keep hearing from Fauci. What is the believer saying? What is the church saying? We are not, we are not, we, we, the temperature is not set by what Fauci said. The temperature is set by what God says. And if God is telling us to build in this season, to move forth in the season, then we need to move forth in the season. Not say, well, I can't move forward because it's, 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 it's a pandemic. Where's that scripture? Matter of fact, if you really want to think about it, every, every time that God had told somebody to do something um, in the Bible, didn't it look crazy? Gideon. He said, hey, mighty man of God, who? Keep in mind, Gideon in a wine press, crotch down, scared of his enemies so they won't come and get his stuff. And he get called a man of God, a mighty valid, a mighty man of God. He get told he gonna he gonna turn this thing around for the people. Our mindset is all wrong. We need to renew our mindset, and but we have to get in place. So we have to cast down those structures and things that we put in place to keep us safe. But it's also an idol, so it keeps God out from doing what He needs to do because we have made something else idol, and we keep pointing to that. And God keeps saying He wants that. Are we willing to give it to Him so that we become all of what we want to be, and that the house is what has what it needs? So that the body will be in place, that everybody's in place. Everybody's important. You ain't finished. Keep going. I don't even know why you stop. Go ahead. You I jump in know, when I finish. You also I, know I'm a stickler for time. But my oh, thing is it is. No, no. Okay, <laughs> let, me, let me put this disclaimer. Okay. This is the platform he gave me. So okay. when he say wrap it up, that's when I wrap it up. So in sure. the meantime, keep wrapping. All right. Yeah, no, it's it's just that we we have to deal with some things. We have been we have we have prayed for change. We have wanted change. You even know this self in our prayer, how we have to repent because we were wrong, and how we were looking at stuff and we was calling it a demon, and it was God trying to give us correct course correction change. But because we were stubborn, we wouldn't do it because we thought it was from the devil. He was telling us to do this. But we kept and, and but we kept whining and, and, and pining about the, the lack of success. But why aren't we giving it a great exploits that we were wanting to have? And it was because we're out of order. It's because I think it was wrong. It's because we allow other things to be greater in our eye than our God. 
So we have a choice to make now. And really, there's still some things that we have to do. We have to repent because of the things that we have, the albatross around the neck of our leaders that we have created so that they think that they have to create and do performance things to get us to mo be mobilized in the church. Wait a minute. Did you say albatross? That's a, a bird. That's, that's a, that's a big bird. Yeah, and it's pecking See what and I'm killing. Saying? Y'all thought I was lying. Okay, now she don't put albatross. Where she get albatross from? But go ahead, mm -hmm. go ahead. Okay, go ahead. But I'm just saying, we have, we have, we have, we have made our leaders perform for the things that we should be doing just because of what they said, and we trust them because they went to God on it. We have burnt out our leaders because we won't get into place because we are still waiting for them to tell us something we want to hear, like it's a smorgasbord. We're going to pick and choose what we want to do. But we say we want to be used by God. Which God? Well, you take your pick at this particular point when we're talking about idols, you really oh. don't know, they'll do you. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I thought I was just, I thought, okay, I thought I missed something. No, you Which was trying God? to slide that in. You was trying to be slick oh. and slide that in, but oh, I, I okay. got you. Start, okay, I, got I was you. just making sure. I was just making sure. <laughs> Are you, okay, preparing for the coming of the Lord. Okay. There's some things okay. that we, there's some things that we need to, there's some things that we need to deal with. And one of those things is how we see one another in the body of Christ. You know, you were talking about the other day about somebody talking about you not on my level. No, we all we all have different various degrees of understanding on things because God calls us to different offices. But that doesn't mean you're less than the other. <laughs> <laughs> That's just, you know, we have to change. We have to change. If we want to fix this, we have to do this. We have to we have to have a grown folk conversation. We have to really want to deal with the fact of why stuff ain't working right. Why people are leaving the church. Now just go, oh, you need to evangelize. No, let's look at, okay, if they coming in, people coming in here, they coming in here because evangelism is going on. Why they not staying? That means we need to look at what's going on inside the house and make the hard questions and sit some people down or have some conversations with some people, you know, mean, nasty or whatever. We need to deal with it. And if they mean it nasty, we need to we need to love on them and give them some healing so that they can operate out of the spirit of love, which is what we all are supposed to be doing in the body of Christ. So I'm I'm getting ready. Okay, so you know, you know, this this is this is how this how you know, <clears throat> this is how you know um God is doing what he's doing. Okay. And this kind of like a sidebar. All right. Both of our pastors are on this live. I know you I can't know. see it. I know. I know you can't see it. Mm -hmm. And normally, normally, and I'm not going to tell you who they are. If you know me, you know who they are. But normally, they don't, they just listen, but they don't necessarily have to respond. And they respond. And let, and, and let me say, let me tell you why. Because they are seeing the very evidence that they have, hey, shy. Mm. They've seen they are seeing the very evidence of their labor and their prayers manifesting on this live. Mm. And I don't, I promise you, I'm not, I'm not, I don't flatter people. I can't stand the spirit of flattery. Mm. The evidence is here. That's why I said it's a blessing. It has been a blessing to be exposed to people who will train you in the word of God right. and will put you out there to learn how to operate in the gift that God has called you to operate in. It is a blessing. Right. Right. You don't, And you need to understand the blessing part. It is a blessing to have someone to teach you with no agenda. Or oh, you can only move the way they want you to move. And that's another piece oh, that we have to break up oh, in the body of Christ. Oh, Everybody oh, should. Your, oh, your, our parents are imprinting us, but oh, we still have individuality. We should not oh, have to look like them cut cookie cutter in order for them to use us. Oh, uh, okay. God, so well, I mean, well, I mean, because think about it. Are we made differently? We all different shapes and sizes. We all different colors. Well, if it wasn't important, it wasn't important to God to do that. Why is it that when we come in the body of Christ until we look a certain way, 
Meaning, not, I'm not talking about from a, a spiritual perspective. I'm talking about from a physical perspective that people won't use you if you don't have the right haircut, if you don't have the right suit, if you don't talk a certain way. But here's the thing. If they are training you properly, when you talk, they going to hear your parents. They going to hear your mama and your daddy in you. Because I promise you, you right. I, sound like, I sound like my mother. I sound like my mother, and I'm not talking about my spiritual mom. I'm talking about my, the mom that carried me. Right, right. And if if you if you hear my daughter talk, my daughters talk long enough. Lord Jesus, yes. You hear me? Mm -hmm. And if but you hear my son talk long thing. enough, it's a, it's the same. And and that's that's what we're <laughs> saying. You man, look, God God has God has put people, the very people. Mm. That has been in the background for decades. In the background, he's pushing these people out mm. because you need to prepare for the coming of the Lord. I'm gonna keep saying it till you understand where we're going with this. My sisters, she throwing all kind of haymakers on this live. She she throwing and she she ain't pulling no punches, and I mm. and I knew this was coming. God, this is this is what you call grace. Absolutely. This is what you call grace. When you look at us, this is the grace of God because he is using us to put this out here to you so you'll be able to grab it and do whatever you need to do with it. And what Keisha said just now, check your fruit. Because you need to know what kind of fruit you you working with. Right, right, right. Go ahead, Absolutely. Renee, because I hear it. Go ahead. I'm no, listening. I'm just no, I'm just saying that I, I think that that is I think that is paramount that we understand that it is important that we get the, get busy in doing the work of the Lord as opposed to creating our own kingdom. Yep. The kingdom of which we work for <laughs> is God's and God's alone. It is not ours. Did you it just is, say create kingdom. our own kingdom? Well, is isn't that what, that what we do? Is? We have my people, oh. and then we start having these different, <laughs> these different pyramid things that we oh. do, so that we build structures and stuff that make ourselves look strong and foundationally sound, and it's not. <laughs> Can somebody put Second Chronicles seven fourteen in the feed for me, please? Because I can't type that fast. If you don't Second. mind. Second, Second Chronicles. Chronicles. No, let somebody else do it. I need. No, to I'm going to. I'm going to the um, scripture. Oh. Second Chronicles. What? Seven fourteen. Okay. All right. I think I know what that is. But let me just. If read my it. people. Yeah. Would would help okay. themselves and, and uh -huh, that one. Seek my face. Yes. Yeah. That's that a one. that's a hard thing to do because that requires, and I believe in this time, and you know we've been praying out this that if our leaders. And here's the thing. We even have to repent and apologize for not praying for our leaders. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. when we see stuff is not airing, the first thing we want to do is put our mouth on it. But yep. the way we need to put our mouth on it is in prayer. Is in prayer. Yep, God prayer. has been dealing with us collectively, me and Valeria both, mm -hmm. about using, instead of cussing folk out, we're going to use our mouths to dispel and cast down imaginations and principalities. Instead of cussing people out, we're going to deal with the spirit and draw the spirit out of them so that then they can get into place and do what they have been called to do. So we are even being challenged to operate differently. So if we don't like something, we gonna go. We praying, God. Okay, our pastor just told us up not some nonsense. What you say? Because <laughs> it's not about it's not about that we gonna like everything that they say. This is we're not saying that you are drone. What we're trying to tell you is stop being a drone because that's what's killing you and your development. Matter of fact, is is re it has caused you to be in an arrested development. You're being retarded because you're not growing. You're not thinking because you're only taking what they gave you and you're not even studying to see if it's right. So you can't even challenge it from that perspective. You don't even know how to pray because you just taking what they say and just keeping it right there. And then you wondering why, uh, whether it's your fruit not right or stuff ain't changing in your life. 
So we have some decisions to make. Everybody got to get this stuff together. This ain't no, um, the leaders need to do their part because they the ones wrong. No, it's all of us. We all have been wrong. We all have been tantalized by uh, you know, worshiping in a way that's really not setting us free. It might give us a euphoria for a second, but when we go back home, we are still about to die and want to kill ourselves because we, the hope that the we hear it in the church ain't the life that we live in. We live in a hell. And we had relief. We've been dealing for this for years. And you're scared to tell somebody because if you do, then you think they're going to think you're a demon or your life ain't right. And the simple matter is it is, it's, it's, it's just a simple will, a, a correction, a course correction that God is trying to do in our lives. And we would just listen. But you're afraid to tell somebody or you're afraid to link up with somebody so that they can see some stuff. Because I'm going to tell you this. I don't talk to Lithuania like every day outside of prayer. We don't talk. So when we pray and stuff come out, it ain't because we had conversations. It's God. We only might connect with each other if something going on and we might want to know something about something that we heard or saw or whatever. But we don't talk during the day. The only time we talk is five o'clock in the morning and whatever comes out in prayer, we deal with. I ain't saying we like it. I just say we deal with it. And when we deal with it, we are seeing the evidence, the results, the things that we have been yearning for for years. And we didn't know why. Yearning for, for years. I just want to emphasize that. Okay, go ahead. Okay. It's the truth. You know it's the truth. You know it's the truth. And there and, and the, the, there, there and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go, but there there's a there's a there's a young lady that's on this feed right now. All right. And, and me and Renee feel the same way about her. Mm. Mm. She has taught us in more ways than one. Mm. And 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 she and 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 I know with me, and it's an, it's another young lady that feels the same way. But with with me, a lot of stuff that she has said to me over the years. I have taken it and I've I have I've taken it to my heart mm -hmm. and it has been a blessing to me. And I'm and I'm talking about Deaconess Thompson. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. She's definitely you, a jewel. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you when when you have somebody that will not only pray for you, that will correct you, that will show you that will give you what you need that will give you a loving arm a loving hand and then she has the ability to slap as well and we can <laughs> take the slap because i promise you i promise you outside of my mother mm. and she knows this outside of my mother she the only one that can say something to me and i don't say nothing back mm. i promise you mm. And I'm not mm -hmm. saying that to to be um because my pastors they say they have that they have their they have their their place too. But what I'm saying to you is that when I hear her speak, I have to I have yeah, to like okay, yeah. Yeah. Her name is Joyce Thompson. Yep. Deacon is Joyce Thompson. Joyce Thompson. Yep. Mm -hmm. She can she she'll say anything to me and she'll say something to me I do not like. And you see how my mouth just clenched right there? That's what happened. She not liking it. And love you. Absolutely. We'll love you. No matter what. We'll love you. And 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 I and I said all of that, you all, because you need to understand. God has put there have been people again. They've been in the background for years. Right. right. And God is pushing all these people out. Right. They put he pushing them out, right. and you need to pay attention. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. It you is very attention. important that we stop looking at the package. It is very important that we stop <laughs> saying that somebody got to be a certain height, a certain color, yes. straight. Okay, yes. 
you know, they gotta look a certain way. If yeah. they over, if they wear, if they if they uh, wear size eight, I ain't listen to somebody. If they yep. overweight, if they if their voice is too high or too low, yep. we got to cut that nonsense out. Yep, all the above. And my thing of it is, is if if you have a visual issue, just close your eyes and listen to the words that are coming out their mouth and see what happens then. Yep. Because God is using unusual people and he's not using people. And it's not about whether you're educated or not. It's more about are you in a posture of submission to do what he tells you to do? Mm-hmm. Are you willing mm-hmm. to do that or are you going to go and say, oh, you know, I ain't got nobody to put me in a pool. I didn't mm-hmm. I, I didn't get educated, so I can't go talk. You know, I don't talk so good. I got a twang. I, I'm too country. You know, <laughs> I'm too right. old. I'm too young. Right. No, just be submitted and available to allow God to use you and then watch the fire fall. Yeah. Because he's doing some awesome things. I've, you know, I've seen some stuff on social media and kids are just just spitting out fire. Yes. And 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 yes. you and you're like, wow. Yes. And then I could see somebody elderly with a mm-hmm. raspy voice. Mm-hmm. And you know. They got, you know, they got that wisdom and they bring it around a barn and you get smacked all in the face with it. You're going, wow. So he's definitely just dispersing like crazy people mm-hmm. to get us ready for his coming. The question is, is one, are we going to heed it? And two, are we going to get in line and do what is required? And let me say this. And I know Renee does not mind. Mm. Myself and Renee, we're in our 50s. Yes. We're in our fifties. Yes. If I had to listen to some of the people that I was listening to before the Lord brought me out, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now mm. because they had me locked up for a reason. Right. Right. I was locked up for a reason. So don't, <clears throat> don't, don't think because you are the age that you are right that you are not usable that is too late that is too late because that's that's a lie that's the mm. devil right locked up mm. Mm. they had the key in their hand right and you know what i gave them the key because i ain't know no better no you were being loyal to a fault and didn't understand that your loyalty was making you bound and you created idols that locked up. Okay, out. that part. Okay, I, okay, that part. Right. Okay. I'll never have right. that part. That one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. And the Lord, I'm working on something about that loyalty to a fault. So, I, okay, we'll work on that. But yeah. I mean, we so, all have done it because we've been do- indoctrinated into that to go down with the ship. <laughs> uh huh. No. <laughs> where, where, where is that in the Bible? Uh huh. Uh huh. Where is it at? Mm-hmm. Where is it at? David asked, could he go and get his stuff? And God said, Yes, and you go get your stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I ain't trying to die. I'm trying to, I'm trying to win. Mm-hmm. And everybody who go with me, they're gonna win too. Mm-hmm. That is my desire. Mm-hmm. That is my desire. But we have to I, freely, uh-huh. freely we've been given, freely we need to we need to give. Yep. As opposed and, to that return on investment nonsense. We, we okay, so since you went there, Carlton, you can. You gonna go to Moses? How about you go to go to Caleb? <laughs> Did you want to go there, sir? Go to Caleb. Caleb was, was in his eighties, I think. He was in his eighties. Yes, 80s. he was. Still oh, okay. wanted to get that mountain. Oh. Yes, he was. Yes, he, he was, was in his eighties. Okay. Yes, he was. Since you want to go to Moses, sir, since you ain't slick, I know you. I see what you're doing, but it's okay. So don't well, you don't ever don't ever discredit. Miriam. Miriam was talking trash as the Man. people was coming across the river, and remember, she was older than Moses. Miriam, the prophetess, Moses' yes. sister, yes, the Sharing one that played the, the tambourine. Yes. Oh, yes. her really? Yes. Yes. She was, oh, she was yes. older than Moses, huh? Really? Okay. Remember, okay. she was the one that told the mistress <laughs> that she knows somebody who can uh, help her out with some breast milk for the baby, which was her brother. Oh, really, mm-hmm. Miriam? Mm-hmm. The no, one that. Yeah, okay. we have to change our mindsets about ministry, and you know, because again, you have to set date that by this time you should do this, and by that time you do this. No, the 
I, I'm learning that the experiences and the things that we had to go through helps us for this journey and the things mm -hmm. that we have to do right now. And that if we didn't have those experiences, then we will be weak and the muscles that we needed to be productive and, and, and do what we need to do in the season wouldn't occur. We wouldn't have the victories that we look for. You can't have six great success without failures. So the lies that you've been told about nobody ever fails and they always succeed, you're lying. You're not going to always feel good about what you're going through. You're not going to always feel like you you are where you need to be and you got sure footing and all those different things like that. But just keep going. We have been denied. We've been told we're not ministry material or you didn't call us to that office, um, you know, or my favorite is, is well, I don't know what you're going to say with your mouth. And I'm like, okay, that's true. But here's the thing. I don't even know what I'm going to say out my mouth. So we both in all about this. <laughs> you don't come from the right background. You you ain't got no, ain't no preachers in your family. They ain't, they ain't those requirements. That's main requirements. To push people out and to put in positions so that they can control the people the way they want to be controlled. And in this season, God is putting people, pushing people forth who don't care nothing about you. Don't care nothing about, you know, whether you got two members or you got thousands of members. Whatever they're going to say, they're going to say. Because they have a fear of the Lord and they are called according to his purpose and they're going to do his will. That's all they want to do. All that so other I'm gonna, stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go back to what I just said a few minutes ago. Oh. It's a blessing to have somebody to teach you and train you to hear God for yourself. Yes, we thank you, pastors, that you allow us. You ask us what we hear. You don't tell us what we hear. And then, and then check us when it's like that. That ain't. That ain't. That ain't. <laughs> you ain't. That ain't right. And you be looking like, okay, how you gonna sit and tell me that ain't right? Mm, it's okay. That, that's what mm -hmm. I'm talking about. That's that balance. That's right. balance of ministry. That's balance of training because they know what they are listening for. Right. Because what you don't realize is that God has said something to them and he's, he's telling them to push you out there mm. to hear God for yourself. So what you what you if you don't know how to hear God for yourself, what you gonna do when the one that you listen to is no longer available? You just gonna sit there and don't do nothing. No, but that's when the ministry goes down because that's when you really realize what's going on. See, that's the that's that's the problem. But how much damage has been done? How much damage has been done? Well, a lot of times you really don't know that until you start seeing some piece, some pieces missing. For whatever reason, whether God told them to move or some people go home to be with the Lord, you just don't know. You just don't know the tentacles of how things really were until some people get missing. And once you see that, then you go, oh, now I see. Now I see at first, you know, you, you thought it was OK. But, you know, we have to we have to we have to stop wanting to go to church for a feel good and start wanting to go to church to get what we need in order to be productive as a citizen in his kingdom. See, think about it. They had the calf and what they do, they party. They weren't trying to change their life. All they want to do was party. They wasn't trying to be example for the other nations because isn't that what God told them to do? They was acting like the other nations. They had liberties and, and, and wasn't even understanding of what those liberties required. Just because you have liberties don't mean you're loose, don't mean that you could just do anything. Matter of fact, you need to be more constrained because your example is going to draw other people to Christ as opposed to them wanting to not be to go with Christ because it's like, well, see, y'all just do anything. Y'all don't even really care. Excellent everything that you do. And it's not a burden. For real, if you if you serious about it, it's really not a burden because the stuff that you probably want to do, you shouldn't be doing anyway. But that's another whole different uh, thing. Um, that's a whole that's a whole another different track. Um, mm -hmm. The thing is, is you know, what y'all gonna do? Where are we? What what are we trying to what are we trying to accomplish in this hour? 
do we really want to see uh, lives change or are we just just want to keep just having church? Do we really want to be in back in the community? Or we just want to just say we had a good service. But people still go home bound and broke and crazy. Is we're 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 coming into a new year. Oh, we got some we got some inspection to do individually and collectively. So so this actually came up in prayer last week, and I'm and I'm gonna give it to you, and we we're gonna wrap it up in about five, ten more minutes. Okay. Um you have you have the parable of the ten virgins. Okay. The Bible says five were wise and five were foolish. Mm -hmm. The wise that the Bible says that their, their lamps were trimmed and they had oil in their lamps. They had extra oil, yes. They, they had right. extra oil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the five, the five foolish said, we ain't got no oil, so give us some of y'all's. <laughs> and they said, no, I'm not giving you none of mine. Because I don't Bible know how said, long he's going to be. I don't know when he's going to show up. That's right. And the Bible says that the five foolish went out to get oil <laughs> for their lamps. Now, you know what? Now, that piece right there, I don't really understand it. Okay, now, okay, it's not like it's time, like right here. We in D.C., and you can go someplace and probably find some oil any time of the night, right? I'm still trying to figure out how they did that or why they thought that that was a good move. They, they, uh, they apparently, apparently, they knew where to go because they went, they, they, they knew where to go. <laughs> apparently, right. they did because they left right. and while they was gone, right. he came and and they yeah, got messed up. They, they got, they messed he up. came and he came into the ones that had prepared for his coming. Mm -hmm. They had prepared for his coming, and when they came back and knocked on the door, mm -hmm. I don't no, you can't come in, right? Because right. I told you I was coming. <clears throat> And you you should have been preparing for my coming. Mm -hmm. You the Bible says that no man knows the hour know or that. the day. Yes, yes, yes. Now let me yes. let me let me let me throw this out here too. Let me throw oh. this out there to you. Oh, let me throw this out there to you, okay? Okay, go ahead. And you know, it could it could very well be me thinking. I might be thinking too much. All right. But the Bible says that only the father knows. When Jesus coming back, yes. So it so am, so is it safe to say that Jesus Himself don't know when He coming back? He said He doesn't know. He said only the Father knows. And we and know that that Jesus and and the Father are one and the same. Don't yes. get me wrong. Don't play. Right. Don't play. Don't twist the words up with me. Right. Okay. I get that part. But if you if you're thinking of if the Father is the only one that knows when Jesus is gonna come back. Mm -hmm. Is it a very, it's a very, it's a, it's a, it's a possibility that God the Father going to say, go ahead, get him now, I'm ready. It's a possibility. And of course he's going to be ready to go because if you, if you think about it, uh, the Bible says that Jesus himself sits on the right hand of the Father. Yes. And we know that that is the, the 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 hand of power and authority. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So the question is, the question is, mm -hmm. <laughs> if Jesus don't know, what makes you think you know? Mm. Cause see, that have dispelled all that, all of that foolishness. Talking about people talking about they, you know, dog, you know, that came. What is it? Year two thousand. Yes. How many yes. times people talking about? Even Prince made a song talking about nineteen ninety. We gonna party like it's nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, mm -hmm. Keisha put it up in the feed. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Two thousand people was going, you know. 
Yeah, the computers but, were supposed to be all jacked up. Yes, I was that, working that night. I was that, working that night in the data that. center because they just all knew that. that the computers were going to blow up and nothing was going to work the same and all that kind of stuff like that. I think the problem of it is, is um, as with all things, we get exhausted because we don't know. Um, and sometimes because people don't know, they get a little lax in their thinking and they keep doing the grace thing. Um, and thinking that they don't really need to be on guard. But think about it when you're not on guard, what happens? There has not been anything from a terrorist attack that has happened in the United States that we did not know about. The issue was that we didn't prepare for it because we were arrogant and we didn't think they were going to do it. We had the information. There has not been an attack from um, in Hawaii when Japan, they blew up over there. We knew it was going to happen. Pearl Harbor is what she's talking about. Yes, we knew it. It didn't happen. The World Trade Center. We knew it was going to happen, but we didn't prepare for it. In Oklahoma City, we knew it was going to happen. We didn't prepare for it. And then afterwards, then we try to put stuff into place and say, okay, to keep it from happening again, we're going to do this, that, and the other. But it's too late because every time that we have these particular events, it never happens the same way. So what does that mean? That means that we need to always be ready. That when we hear the information that we need to be proactive as opposed to reactive. Because in the case of those, those 10 women, those five who were foolish, you miss out. And in some cases, that means you could be dead. Because you will not follow the instructions that the Father has given you. And it's not because he gave bad instructions. It's because we are looking at it through, through filters that are marred. So we say, oh, or is he, well, is he really going to come today? He might go. He ain't coming today. We got time. But Renee, he didn't even open the door when the five foolish came back. They missed he, out because they didn't follow didn't the instructions. The door. He they didn't, didn't even open the, the door. Well, why would he? Why would he? He gave you the instructions. He told you to wait. You he told so when you waiting, that means that you have to do whatever that is. So okay, you waiting, you know how long it's gonna be. So you should have it. they didn't even okay. This is not a situation where they had extra and they ran out of extra and then something happened. They didn't even prepare as if they needed extra. They didn't because either they thought that he was gonna come in a shorter period of time, or they didn't think he was gonna come at all. You know, again, in our own eye, we are trying to figure out what God going to do as opposed to allow him to do what he wants to do. Flow with him. Flow with him. I'm looking at this series and it's just blowing my mind. There's a whole bunch of crazy nonsense going on there. It's called The Wheel of Time. And in the first episode, there, these women are taking this young lady through this, 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 this right. And they braiding her hair. They telling her how to, you know, you know, when you touch her hair, your braid. We're always with you. All this another time. All this nonsense. And you know, they telling her, you know, how to flow and all this stuff like that. And all of a sudden, they push her off this cliff. And she in the water. She is fighting this water tooth and nail, and she's drowning. Then all of a sudden, she remembers what the woman told her. Her guy was telling her flow with the water flow with the water when she start giving up and stop fighting the water and letting the water take her where the water wanted to take her she got on dry land she got to the place where she needed to be and then she went back to the celebration that they had for her because now she had got through the initiation now the initiation could have killed her but because she started to listen to the instructions that she got and start to flow with the water, the water took her to where she needed to go. Uh, this was the opening scene. And I'm like, God, you are really messing with me. If you only listen to what I'm telling you, Renee, and flow like I'm flowing, you will see some stuff that you've never seen before. Stuff that you thought you would never see, you could see if you just flow with me. So... I can keep on being foolish or I can listen to the instruction and flow with him and be wise and be at the dinner table at that at the, the preparation for the wedding when he comes. The great coordination. The great coordination. That's yeah, that's what the saints call the old saints, the great coordination. Amen with him. Okay. But we have, I mean we have a decision to make. We do. 
pretty much. Flow with them or, or be foolish. That's it. <laughs> That's all. <sighs> okay, y'all. We're going <clears> to <throat> wrap this thing up. It's so good. Because <laughs> we, I promise you, we can go another an hour. We really can. But we want we want to make sure that you get what the Lord is saying. Mm -hmm. And I just gave it to you. We gave you the long, the long version, and we're giving you the short version. Right. The short version is prepare for the coming of the Lord. If you want to hear the long version, listen to the replay. I mm -hmm. promise you it'll be a blessing. Amen. I promise you it'll Amen. be a blessing. This is the last Tuesday of, of this year. And again, I told you at the beginning, I didn't know whether I was going to come on live or not because I've been on sabbatical. Mm. But there's a reason why he mm. wanted us to come on. Mm. And if you've been if you've been hanging with us, and we appreciate mm. you for hanging mm. with us. Absolutely. Thank you. But for if, it. if you've been hanging with us, you'll Listen see why he wanted us. <laughs> yep. You see why he wanted us to come on tonight. Amen. Prepare for the coming of the Lord. Exodus 19, Exodus 20. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Prepare for the coming of the Lord. Renee, I, you want to um, wrap it up, honey? Well, you want to pray us out? You, want, you, wanna, wanna you can no, pray us out no, unless you have another no, come. You have anything no, else to say? No, so you can pray us out. And, and also... To let you know, if you know somebody who is on, who is not on social media, who is not on social media, mm -hmm. this session will be uploaded on my YouTube page, which is Dr. Valeria Coley, in probably next thirty minutes to an hour. Please mm -hmm. like, tag, and share this live of anybody that's on Facebook. Um, anybody that you you all may be to figure out how to get it on Instagram. I don't know how to get it on Instagram <laughs> over an hour, but I've seen people do it live right, on Instagram. Right, right. But we just want to make sure that the word gets out. So if you know somebody who you would like to tag this into, please tag them into it. And if you know somebody that is not on social media, let them know. Mm -hmm. They can look at this session on my YouTube page, Dr. Valeria Coley and my doctor is legitimate. I went to school and got my doctorate degree. Okay, she so get I just want to put it to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, Dr. Valeria Coley on YouTube. Mm -hmm. We pray that you all were blessed. We pray that you continue to pray with us, yes. and we pray that this coming new year will be a blessing to you. Mm -hmm. Watch what God do in 2022. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. gave that to me earlier. Mm -hmm. Watch what God do Watch in 2022. Watch. Okay? Mm -hmm. You go ahead and pray us out, babe. Dear Lord God, we thank you for the time together. We, we thank, thank you, Lord God, for the fellowship. Uh, we pray, Lord God, for the healing of our leaders and the people, Lord God, that they will hear you clearly and allow you, Lord God, to lead and guide. Lord God, we repent for causing our leaders to sin because of our folly, because we didn't want to do right. So we kept we kept being a stench in their nostrils and whining to keep them from doing what you say, to say that they will get out of order with you. We repent of that, Lord God, and pray, Lord God, for the healing of our leaders so that they can again rebuild and do what you call them to do. Lord God, I pray for the people who have been abused by leadership. I pray that you will heal them every way they hurt, and they will, they will, they will look again. They will go again, and allow to be you to set them in leadership who will nourish them and love them and provoke them to every good word and work and change for your glory. That will use them for your glory, not to build their kingdom, but your kingdom be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord God, we need you. Help us and give a strategy on how to encourage one another to get in a place and stay in place so that the body won't lack nothing and that we can do great exploits in your name. In all things, Lord God, we thank you. We praise you. We give your name the glory and all the honor. It is in the matchless name of Jesus that we pray. Amen.
Amen. God Amen. bless y'all. Happy, happy New Year. Happy holidays. Mm -hmm. yeah. Happy Kwanzaa. Oh, yeah. Feliz yeah. Navidad. <laughs> the whole nine. Happy Hanukkah. All that. Yep. 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 We love y'all so very much. We pray that you all have a wonderful evening. Yes. Please remain safe. Please keep God the, in the, first in your life. Please keep God mm -hmm. first in your life. Mm -hmm. And for mm -hmm. those of you who do not know God, who do not know Jesus in the free part of their sins, mm -hmm. the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, mm -hmm. if thou yes. shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord mm -hmm. Jesus and believe in thine heart yes. that God yes. raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10, 13 says, whosoever shall call upon the name mm -hmm. of the Lord shall be saved and his name is jesus mm -hmm. john three sixteen. for god so loved the world that he gave he gave he gave his only begotten son for so whosoever shall believe in him should not perish, should not perish but have, have everlasting life, life. Mm -hmm. so we we pray that you all come yes. to know jesus in the free pardon of your sin yes and we pray that you accept him today because the bible says that today Mm -hmm. It's the day of salvation. We love you. God bless Amen. you. Have a great evening and a happy new year. Love you. <laughs>